are these people? <laughs> well, Charles Booker does look a little like Will Smith. Yeah. Any? So, kind of. Colin wanted to rant again. I think this is a <laughs> reoccurring segment on our show, that, especially when Colin joins, that he wants to rant about something. So, um, I'll let you take the floor a bit here. So, um, if you want. So, um, so I was. So normally these rants, I guess, if this is going to be a segment, yeah, uh, usually come up from something regarding political news that I just kind of resonate with. And um, one of the issues I think for us doing um, this weekly is we usually are not able to report on stuff, you know, right away uh, yeah. when a lot of other streamers who do this every day are able to do so. However, the advantage that I think we have is that, you know, after a few days when things kind of settle, you know, we're able to kind of bring in another perspective yeah. to some of these stories that people may not necessarily talk about. Um, so I think, you know, initially when I was inspired to do this story, there was a lot of connections that I was making uh, that I wanted to bring up uh, for you guys to, you know, make connections with as well. So um but yeah, that being said, uh, so as you guys know from last week, uh, the uh, the aid for Ukraine basically passed, you know, yeah, unanimously, uh, basically among in the House. So uh, Manju uh, Raju uh, tweeted out last week. 368 to 57 House approves massive aid package for Ukraine sending it to the Senate, a majority of Republicans backed the $40 billion bill, yeah. though the no votes were all Republicans. So basically, you know, um, our squad members basically approved this bill. Yeah. Um, so if you could go to the next slide. Yes, um, sir. So to give some context to that, um, so uh so inside paper tweeted uh i think this was on friday when i saw this tweet uh new alert uh gop Sen senator Rand paul blocks quick passage of 40 billion ukraine aid to which charles booker who is who as of yesterday won his primary in kentucky so he's going up against Rand paul uh for the senate seat uh in the fall right he tweets out Rand paul's actions are shameful my name is charles booker i'm a lifelong kentuckian proud husband father and the person who's going to retire Rand paul uh this november please help me win this race by chipping in today and so so to be fair to charles uh yeah this was either an automated tweet or some intern or whoever was working on his social media account just tweeted this out uh, because I've been actually been following tweet, uh, Booker's tweets for a while. And basically many of his tweets are basically Rand Paul bad. Right. So, um, so, you know, so I would think that this was more ornamented than anything else, but the optics of this, especially since Rand Paul was opposed to Ukraine aid was very suspect. Right. Uh, I think he's since deleted this tweet. Yeah. And then a uh, friend of mine, Mo, who lives in the DMV, I've done some, uh, I was involved with him for the March for Medicare for All last year. And then uh, the protest, protest at the Capitol uh, basically tweeted out after him. So you are pro war, but Rand Paul, Rand F. and Paul is less so. Got it. So this actually kind of reminded me of um, a stream that I happened to watch live two years ago where Richard Medhurst uh, talks about foreign policy and he mentioned Charles Booker way back then, but talking about how, you know, I think especially for a lot of our politicians, and I think you can even include the squad in this, you know, the lack of foreign policy uh, is very concerning, you know, given, you know, how involved uh, the United States is in international politics. 
So yeah. Ashley will clip out. At, so Ashley just watched to see what Richard said a couple of years ago, returning Charles Booker in connection to foreign policy. I have an issue with Booker. I have an issue with Charles Booker. Looks great on the surface. Progressive, Medicare for all, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, wonderful. Me, I want to cover him. I want to learn more about him. So I went on his website. I go to his website. There's no foreign policy. Zero. How the fuck are you running for United States Senate and you didn't put foreign policy on your website? You're not, you're not running for government <laughs> in, in another country. United States, you dictate the world's foreign policy. You're running to be a fucking senator, and I don't know what your foreign policy is. Just go ahead. Go look up Charles Booker, Palestine. I can't find a thing. Charles Booker, Syria. I can't find a thing. Charles Booker, APAC. Nothing. I go on his website, nothing. You don't think that's unusual? If that's acceptable to you, we got issues. You see, I'm here to dig through the bullshit. I know he supports Medicare for all. Big fucking deal. I want to know what he supports in terms of sanctions. Is he okay with sanctions that kill people in Venezuela and Iran? Is he okay with sanctions on Syria? Is he okay with no Palestinian state? That's the real shit that I want to know about. This is unacceptable. The United States dictates world affairs. And you're running to be a fucking senator, and I don't know what your foreign policy is? This is unacceptable. This tells me that you hide in some shit. Well, it was interesting, and I actually want to give a shout to Richard because um, I started watching him a couple of years ago during the lockdowns when I had when I was home and had not much to do. But he actually brought up something that I thought about, but I think he really brought it to you know um, like more clarity in my mind about the idea that. A lot of our politicians, especially those who are running for the House and the Senate, never ever really talk about foreign policy uh, regard, as far as their uh, overall policy measures once they get into office. Um, so actually back then, um, and actually if you want, continue watching that clip, Richard shows you what uh, Charles Booker had as far as his policies, you know, like he talked about Medicare for all, you know, and all these other more progressive policies, but nothing regarding foreign policy. Um, so this was when he was running against Mitch McConnell back in 2020. Uh, if you look at his website now, actually, there's really no policy at all. He doesn't have anything, you know, regarding Medicare for all, $50 million wage, nothing. The only thing he has is like, I think something like related to the Kentucky New Deal. Um, but there's nothing in regards to his uh, what he stands for, so uh, that he listed on his website. So, you know, so that you know, like I've kind of noticed that, and I've kind of made the connection to the squad. You know how lacking they themselves are uh, on foreign policy um, themselves. Um, but before I move on, uh, Reef or Indy, do you have any additions you want to say? Um. And you want to go? Oh, uh, wow. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's it, it's not looking good. <laughs> I'll say that for sure. No. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, it's out, out left. I mean, what, what, these guys are supposed to be represented. Look, the Charles Booker thing is... Richard's awesome. I mean, I, I missed the Jimi Hendrix poster in the background. That's the first thing I want to say. But because uh, now he blurs out his background, he's got all those slick RT stuff. But that was like old school. That was the Richie that I watched every, you know, we were chat all the time. Disco, it was awesome. Anyway, uh, I reminisce. Uh, another thing about this, again, was, was again, that, yes, it was absolutely suspect. And, and he right to call it out. Nobody calls it out. Nobody looks at policy on websites. Nobody hears policy discussed by these candidates and nobody holds them accountable to the policies. They say they're going that they support. Again, they support them. Great. But what are they going to do when it actually comes time to vote? You know, um, I will uh, defer to Reef because I know Reef has a story that he likes to talk about all the time when he gets in front of a candidate. And uh, and I'm sure he'll he'll tell that. Yeah, I that mean, portion. 
So this is this is the same thing that we continue to like worry about necessarily, right? With um with I mean generally they don't they don't have an answer to the question of like how do they not be uh, co-opted and and coerced by the elites to do what they want anyway, whether it's foreign policy or domestic, right? Um but you know, usually the only answer I get is the same one AOC gave, which is I'm only going to be a one term candidate. How is that working? Is she is she a one term candidate at this point? No. Well, who would have thunk it? Uh, you know. Um. But yeah, you were saying she's going for a third term. Yep. And will continue to do so. They're now career politicians. And to be a career politician, right, apparently you have to be part of this game of being nice to the elite and powerful to get your crumbs that they won't even give you anyway. They continue to alter deals in that regard. So they, they, they win this game. Don't play their shit. Just don't. Um, but it's funny you say that, Reef, but like, I think I heard this. I'm not. I may have been from Crystal Ball. I think that I heard this from or somebody in yeah. the space. But basically, the idea is like in DC, you know, in Capitol Hill, you get respect essentially by being a dick. You yeah. know, like that's how like Joe Manchin and you know you can men even argue like many of the Republicans too. You know, like have as much power as they have because essentially like they play the bully you know yeah. they play to uh, office gate and like challenge you know all these bills or whatever that you know is thrown at them and it's almost like they're rewarded for it whereas the scott are like basically our little puppies I'm not sure why i'm thinking about puppies tonight but like <laughs> it, it, like oh if i just do whatever you know, you know, the leadership tells me to do, then I'll get what I want, which so far has not worked out for them, you know, but they think that by being nice, that they're able to get uh, the tangibles that they need. And so far, and it hasn't worked. So it's kind of right. like, when are they going to be the dicks that we elected them essentially to be, you know? Well, power uh, seeds, no, power seeds, nothing without a demand. And they have not done anything to actually hold up any legislation or be any type of a, of a threat or any type of adversary at whatsoever to leadership or to the Democratic Party. And look, we covered this pretty extensively on Sunday night, uh, Reef and I talking about how the Democrats are not representing us. So stop giving money to them. Stop giving money to them. Please, God almighty, stop giving money to them. Right. Yes. And. Yeah, and I mean, on basically on Twitter, you know, like people, you know, and I, we have um, Marjorie Taylor Greene's tweet, you know, adding, adding AOC regarding, you know, essentially, why did you vote for this bill? Right. Um, you but know, outlefting people, her. We're right wingers. We're right wingers now. Being like, oh, you know, like, so you're defending, you know, like Rand Paul or Marjorie Taylor Greene. No, it's not the fact that we're defending them, but at the end of the day, they voted correctly. Yeah, you know, broken clock, like, yada yada, but I'll still take it. Like, right. why couldn't the squad? Yeah, but do the only, that? you know, you know, like my my if, my contention is that they they would if this were a Republican, they would never have voted against this. They did this because this is Joe Biden and Ukraine and Hunter and and it fits their narrative, and it doesn't cost them anything because they know it's going to pass in the military. Right. Gonna, again, performative. Agreed. Yeah. Why didn't the squad do that? Who knows? Because they. Because they got bullied, clearly. Right. They got threatened, right? Isn't that right. what we heard? They, yeah. We heard they got so threatened? I'll definitely get to that. But then, like, uh, okay. I'll definitely will get to that. But um, uh, shout out to Ryan Knight. Um, I actually, over the weekend when I was putting this uh, segment together, I actually found, um, like, a snippet of uh, Corey Bush's statement regarding her vote. Um, you know, so, but... Over the but since then I was able to pull the whole thing, yeah. um, and I think it's important to pull to have pull the whole thing because 
um, because basically what, what I saw the tweet was she was like, you know, like, um, I'm concerned about this, you know, and, but reading the whole thing, I think just kind of makes her actions against voting for this bill, especially heinous. Um, so, um, so I'll read what she wrote. Um, this evening I voted in support of- Sorry, oh, go ahead. It's okay. This evening, I voted in support of the Ukraine supplemental aid package to provide assistance to Ukrainians who are resisting Russian aggression with a heroic amount of resolve and unrelenting resilience. As the murderous Putin regime desperately accelerates its brutality in Ukraine, my vote today was one to strengthen the Ukrainian people's fight against oppression and tyranny. All people deserve their right to self-determination. As this conflict progresses, its ramifications will spread beyond Ukraine. Indeed, many other countries rely on Russia and Ukraine for a significant percentage of their wheat, fertilizer, and vegetable oil imports. This bill directly responds to this looming crisis by providing $4.35 billion to provide emergency food assistance to people around the world suffering from hunger as a result of the conflict in Ukraine. Similarly, mm -hmm. this legislation provides critical funding for refugee settlement and diplomatic support. You're yep. right. Uh, next slide. Yes, sir. Recently, I introduced the Energy Security and Independence Act to build renewable energy capacity using the Defense Pro Production Act. I urge the Biden administration to utilize the authorized $600 million to invest in renewable energy and heat pumps to help lower utility prices for American families and create reliable en energy sources. So I'm actually gonna pause there. Okay. Because she basically was like, oh, I voted for this bill for these reasons. And then I put in this uh, uh, bill, you know, to kind of offset, you know, her vote. Like, Corey, if you really felt this strongly about this bill, why are you promoting it more? Right. You know, like, um, why are you screaming at the top of your lungs about this, especially knowing, like, we're giving all these money to Ukraine, and yet when Franco asked you and AOC back over the summer, you know, as far as the housing uh, moratorium, you know, like, how are we going to help people with their back rent? You guys were like, oh, we're working on it. You know? Right. Um, well, when I screamed out, what about the 10% who were going to get evicted uh, from their homes anyway? You know, you turned on the music on blast to drown me and Franco out. So if you really were concerned about this bill that you introduced in the House, you haven't tweeted about it. You haven't mentioned anything about this, you know, in mainstream media. And actually thinking about this now, if you did that, you know, like you actually would be looked upon highly because that's what people are struggling with right now. You would actually be, um, like you will get positive press uh, because you're talking about something that actually helps the American people. So the fact that you have, she hasn't, you know, I think just kind of speaks uh, to a cowardice here. Um, I'll continue though, um, reading this. Yep. Additionally, at 40 billion, this is an extraordinary amount of military assistance, a large percent of which will go directly to private defense contractors. In the last year alone, the United States will have provided Ukraine with more, than mil with more military aid than any country in the last two decades and twice as much military assistance as the yearly cost of war in Afghanistan, even when American troops were on the ground. The sheer size of the package given and an already inflated Pentagon budget should not go without critique. I remain concerned about the increasing risk of direct war and the potential for mili direct military confrontation. This mm. moment of crisis demands that we respond to the looming hum humanitarian and climate catastrophe with clear goals. The billions in funding for- And a strongly worded letter. Basically. Sorry. The billions in funding for food security and humanitarian, humanitarian relief are important steps towards achieving that outcome, as are the bill's substantive actions to directly aid the Ukrainian people in their fight against Putin, Putin's authoritarianism. So all that to basically say, 
you know, I voted for it, but I'm against it. Mm. Or I have concerns about it. So if she was concerned about it, why do you vote for it, Corey? AOC, Ilhan Omar, Rokana. Um, so it's so funny that we're posting about Jordan now, given like uh, I posted it, like I set this up on Monday. And since, you know, he has gone off the rails again. Um, but uh, he had a lot to say regarding Nina Turner, regarding her loss, uh, her Senate race, uh, no, her um, uh, congressional race uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, but he mentioned, so, I mean, I'm gonna be very fair to Jordan here. Like yeah. he was right on this issue uh, regarding the squad and the reason why they didn't, you know, endorse Nina Turner, except for AOC and the 11th hour when it really didn't mean anything. Right. So um, I think it's very interesting considering the lack of play that this portion of his live stream went. I think the only person who I believe might report on did report on this clip was Savvy. Um, but yeah, if you play it, it will probably give, well, I think it's uh, without question, like why the squad are voting the way they did. But mm. I think this will just bring it more to light as to why they voted, you know, for this Ukrainian funding. I said, I said last night they were threatened. The squad was threatened not to support her. Well, I could tell you, based on a few conversations I've had, and not, not directly with Dina, Corey Bush and some others were threatened, not physically, but threats, you know, if you support Dina Turner, uh, Democrat, the Democratic establishment, we're going to be sending out the bat signals, the super PACs to go against you in your re-elections. Corey Bush is up for re-election in a tough primary in St. Louis, that if you support Dina Turner, we are going to make sure that big money is against you. You will not have the Congressional Black Caucus endorsement and we will be coming hard for you. That I know for sure happened. And you want to know something? It's still no excuse not to support Dina Turner. What you do when you're being threatened by corporate villain bullies is you punch back. What any of these squad <laughs> members should be doing if they're being threatened, uh, then we're going to come after you in this election if you support Dina Turner, uh, blah, 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 is you have your press people contact CNN, Are we hot, Mike? MSNBC, uh, yes. hell, Fox News, whatever it is, because yeah. they cannot resist. They cannot resist Dem party fighting. Mm -hmm. They love that story. De Democrat Party disarray. And you say Congresswoman Bush would like to come on uh, to reveal threats she's getting for the Democratic Party, not to suppress, not to support Nina Turner. You would be called back in five minutes. You want to know how I know? Because I worked for these corporate outlets. Oh, did you now? They favor conflict and fighting way more than anything else because it's good for ratings. What have you been doing lately? You put them on blast publicly. Mm. You put them on blast publicly. That sounds like so, is what somebody's been you doing. Threatening you, they're threatening to come after you if you support Nina Turner. And you know what that does? Number one, it actually helps you in your election if you're truly worried about your election because it rallies your base of supporters yeah. and activists to stick yeah. with you because you stuck with Nina. Yeah, you stuck it with gets her. It media attention. Yeah, it does. It puts the whomever, whether it's the Congressional Black Caucus. Whomever. Nancy Pelosi, whatever. Yeah. It puts pressure on them. It puts them on blast. And how does it put pressure it on them? It rallies your troops in St. Louis. Or if you're Rashida Tlaib in Detroit. Or if you're Ilhan Omar in Minneapolis, Minnesota. 
And the other thing it does is it rallies the troops behind Nina Turner. Because when the progressive movement nationally sees, all right, finally, these fucking squad members are actually going at the Democratic Party. They're calling it out. It excites Hmm. people. It makes people want to get involved, not only with the squad's campaigns, Hmm. but Nina's campaign. The progressive movement isn't asking (laughs) you to be perfect. They're not asking you to get us Medicare for all by week's end. They're asking you for one simple thing, to fight. Not to roll up into a ball because the Democratic Party establishment or the Congressional Black Caucus or whomever the, whomever the fuck it is, is threatening you. He believes in nothing. He <laughs> believes in nothing. <laughs> Nihilist. Nihilist Jordan Tarleton. <laughs> we believe it. Give us the money, I Lebowski. I did a 45 minute rant on nihilism so and defeatism so if you yes. find it on our page you'll find it that's <laughs> I think a worthwhile Oz, clip to Oz watch wanted to that w- wanted to weigh the in the idea of people on the left being nihilist or defeatist yes. you know in terms of our government and the squad or whatever but we just put that clip uh, out uh, Oz wanted yeah. to weigh in real quick he's saying that He's saying things that are common knowledge for decades about the how the dim establishment rolls. Um, yeah. He's also yeah. leaving out points to his solution. Um, yeah. So, and he's a real tough guy sitting in his car. I was concerned for his safety. Um, <laughs> you're not supposed to, like, stream like that. He, like, looks at camera, too. Like, bro, road, eyes. While driving, eyes. yes. Well, hey, yeah, that's he, that's dangerous. That is dangerous. He had a cameraman, but, though, I believe, who who's sitting in the passenger seat. So. Well, great. No, that's, he that, can't that, drive the car There's though. Something. Like, yeah, Jordan has to look at the right. road to drive. He the should car. have a driver. He should have a driver, and then he will like film himself in the. But, but anyway, the, I yeah, digress. But all yeah, but Boots, all bootstrap. That, yeah, I mean, but all of that to say, you know, like. Okay, Jordan has made some shit lip points. Unfortunately, he made them today and yesterday. Yesterday and today. Yep. You know, so, but I think for <laughs> this, we have to give him props here, you know, just as far as, you know, replace what he said about you, Nina Turner with Ukraine aid. And you can, st- and this still, still the very much, still like the, still, the same thought applies, you know. You should like squad members should not be out lefted, Bernie included, by Rand Paul and Marjorie Taylor Greene on this issue. Yeah, we know like it's performative on the Republicans and basically to, you know, own the Democrats, essentially, you know, especially the squad, you know, but the squad should have been ahead of this, especially like if it was going to pass anyway. Yeah. Why not do a performative? No. You know, like, so right now you're on record for basically funding more money to Ukraine when, as Corey said, according to her, we have issues with energy here. Yeah. You know, and I happened to watch this clip. Um, and I know Lucy also watched this clip live when Savvy, you know, showed this clip. You know, someone in her community made a good point. You know, as far as the fact that, you know, the squad, they're after generational wealth at this point, you know, because, you know, as we said, you know, AOC is running for her third term, you know, like, how many terms do you have to run in order for you to get your congressional benefits? Right. Five? Yeah. Five years? So at least for AOC, she's pretty close to that right now. And then the other squad members are falling in line behind that, you know? So right now they're just more worried about, you know, the wealth for themselves so as far as their careers over the needs of the people, you know? Um, so we have to call it Lucy. Well, again. I, I will, I will say one thing that, yeah. especially AOC, the day she steps out of Congress, she said for life. Okay. Mm-hmm. She's going to be wealthier leaving Congress than she ever will be in Congress. 
because she's going to be a mega celebrity and people will back up Brinks trucks full of money to throw at her to be on her show, to represent their product, to do whatever it is that they, that she, she will be able to write her own ticket. Right. And you know what? Um, I didn't mention this, but Charles Booker has a book out. Like, he already has a book out. You know, I was like, I thought you have to be in Congress in order to get a book. So, you know, like, so really for a lot of these politicians, it's really about their personal gain, you know, like it within the system to just become part of that class at the detriment to us uh, in the working class. You right. Know? Um, so Lucy, you know, shout out to her once again, you know, she tweeted out, so I learned on Savvy that the only threat the fraud squad received from non-compliance was not getting back from another term by establishment. Not that threat, no violence. That's what they consider a threat. Does that sound like a threat to you? Um, I mean, like, if not being financially secure for the rest of my life, I would probably would consider that a threat. But, right. you know, but that's not what AOC herself talked about, you know, wanting to be. So this is one last slide that I pulled up. Um, like a few minutes before we went live, I know we've probably seen this slide, this clip many times, especially if you've watched oh the door, but you know, hmm. back when AOC was the darling on the left, you know, and she was saying the right shit, you know, this is what she said, play the clip. No Wait. sound. No sound. You want sound? You say you want sound? Sound was nice. Literally, at oh, one, two, can you hear me? Oh, from... There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steph. <laughs> um, this is literally from the Justice Democrats Facebook page or YouTube page. Don't people realize that the most powerful position you can be in is when you are missionary? Not materially Sorry. Attached to a position of power. If you're a one-term Congress mm. member, so what? You can make 10 years worth of change in one term if you're not afraid. Mm, that sounds like something she wasn't willing to do. Yeah, um, you know, so, I mean, so uh, that's all I got as far as my rant this week, well, you know, but... I Oz think it just gave us a video treat to to look at before we pulled out of this segment. So, um... in contrast, Russian elections are rigged. Political opponents are imprisoned or otherwise eliminated from participating in the electoral process. The result is an absence of checks and balances in Russia, and. The decision of one man to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq. I mean, of Ukraine. Is that how old he is? 75? And brutal invasion of Iraq. I mean, of Ukraine. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's good. Uh, any final words? Um, on Booker, the squad, all this mess. I mean, again, it's it's they don't um, have an answer to my fucking question, which is, how the fuck are you gonna do any of it? Like, there's no plan. There's no plan. You've communicated no plan of action. No, like, you know, they only give platitudes if they give anything. Like, they only give lip service. Like, but they they know. AOC knows what we want. Like, you know, and this leads me to believe that there's no incentive for her to, like, do it. You know? Like, I, I don't know. She, she definitely needs a, a stick and not this carrot because the carrot's doing better than us. So. They say we need more squad members. 
I'm sure. Yeah, you know what you know what I think it's about. Vote harder. It's all about geometry. It's all about geometry. Wow. <laughs> it's just geometry. I, that's true. That's true, Shaq. It is. It is definitely about it's geometry. All and, of eight, and how much? And how, how much cat? How much cash can they can they fit in their bank accounts? That's that that is the geometry yeah. I think we're talking well, about. You know they were yeah, because I just mathematics. Tired of paying for weed. They were tired of paying for weed. So yeah, but that's that, that's you. They're not. They don't pay for weed. Well, I mean, they, someone's got to. Yes, and um, but anyway, um, hold I mean, on. Before to get... we go to our last story of the night, can you pull up the? Yes, hold on. The um. The uh, thumbnail, my thumbnail. Uh, yes, your um. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so last... our executive producer is weighed in, but go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So last week, Reef did the amazing Photoshop job of um, essentially <laughs> making me into tender heart bear. You know, so yes, and he tried to do that again this week, and I was like, "No, I'm not going for that this week." It made sense last week because there was actually a Care Bear that had like the black fist in his belly, and I was talking about uh, protesting last week, so that made a lot of sense. Didn't make a lot of sense this week. So I, I know we have a very small, small but growing community, but. Mm. I would love to see if somebody who is artistically minded yeah. to yeah. create like a super deformed anime version of me as a care bear that we can use yes. for our thumbnails whenever I do rants like this. Yes. I so I'm getting excited that. just thinking about it. That is yeah. I'm just getting excited no, about it. different I'm enough. That we we could put it on merch and things like that. Like I'd love to be able to actually right, make without a getting... realistic Colin Care Bear. That's what I want. Yeah. yeah. You know? So I want like a super deformed anime chibi style. Yeah. B. Make as Colin a Care, a Care Bear. Bear. Just make you me got a Care it. Bear. You got Do it. it. Do it. Send it to us at get <laughs> inn get it. indie news. What is it? What's our Twitter? Do it, do it. Uh, you can find our Twitter at, at get, in at, the description below at, at our link tree. Um, yeah, at get any news. You got it. Get any news. That's it. Uh, yeah, it it yeah, was yeah. not Shadow Man. It was actually uh, it was actually Fred Edward, uh, one of the volunteers for INN uh, at Airways A E R Waves on Twitter, and he says, "I do not believe AOCIA will become quote unquote progressive again if she wins a third term." Creating another excuse for her complicity with the establishment DNC is more hope born to keep the status quo. Oh, 